Hi, it's Miss Parrot, and this video is about how to count atoms using ESC, or the escape method. Let it be known that some of the materials for this video do come from Chris Kessler and Kessler Science, and I've modified them to make them my own. So, what is the escape, or ESC method? That's simply a simplified equation that means the number of atoms of a certain element equal the subscript times the coefficient in the chemical formula that you see. So this is a chemical formula, 2CO2, and what this represents is two carbon dioxide molecules. The two at the beginning of this is called the coefficient. That represents that there are one, two carbon dioxide molecules. The subscript two here represents that on a carbon dioxide molecule, there are two oxygens. This carbon doesn't have a subscript, but since the C is present, it means that there is one of that atom. Let's look through the different ways that we can use the escape method in some different situations. So if you happen to have just one letter that represents an element symbol, in this case C, it has no subscript, therefore the subscript is one. Remember, if it's present, there that means there is one there. There's no coefficient so the coefficient is also understood to be one. And we're gonna use our little equation here. We write our element and do subscript times coefficient. So uh, we have carbon and one times one, we have one carbon atom. And that's what it looks like floating around by itself. In a more realistic situation with carbon, it'll buddy up like I showed you, with some oxygens and make a molecule like CO2. In this case, you do have a subscript. The subscript, you're gonna apply that to the previous element. So the element that it's right next to is gonna have that many atoms. And again, if there's no subscript, that doesn't mean there's none of that, it means there is one of them. So in this case, we're gonna set up our ESC. So for my elements, I list them carbon and oxygen. Then my subscript for carbon, since it is present, it's one. And oxygen, the subscript here is two. So one there and two there. My coefficient, again from the previous notes, if there's no coefficient, the coefficient is one. It's understood to be one. So we put that there, multiply those together, and we have one carbon and two oxygens. Again, to make a carbon dioxide molecule. Now, sometimes you're gonna have parentheses. Parentheses will set apart some parts of the molecule from others as for counting. So in this case, we have parentheses around OH, and a two is a subscript outside of it. So what this means is this two subscript is going to apply to all the elements within the parentheses. So when we set it up, we list our elements, magnesium, oxygen, and hydrogen right here. Our subscript for magnesium, because it is present, it is one. Oxygen and hydrogen, this subscript applies to both. You distribute it, almost like the distributive property in math. So their subscript is two. Car, or the coefficient, there is none. So as we learned from this first column, if there's no coefficient, the coefficient is one. So we'll multiply all these by one to get one magnesium atom, two oxygens, and two hydrogens. And what this is gonna kind of look like in real life is magnesium with two OH groups, 
coming off the sides. In our final example, we're going to look at what if we have both a subscript and a coefficient outside the parentheses. So if you have a subscript and coefficient outside, then just like before, every element inside the parentheses is going to have whatever the subscript says. Then you're going to multiply whatever is going on inside the parentheses by the coefficient second, the second that, or that will apply next. So we write our elements, in this case, oxygen and hydrogen oxygen and hydrogen. This two subscript applies to both of these since they're both in the parentheses, two. And then we multiply by our coefficient, which in this case is three. In both cases, two times three is six. So we have six oxygen atoms and six hydrogen atoms in three OH2 molecules. And what that's gonna look like sort of in real life would be this three molecules that look like this. And that's how you count atoms using the ESC method.